Hello, my name is Anthony Brotodo from Rennes in France. Today we are going to um, learn how to annotate a new genome using fun annotate uh, on a Galaxy instance. We're going to use usegalaxy.eu, but it should work on other usegalaxy server. And we are going to do this by following the tutorial in the genome annotation section. And we'll use this one genome annotation with fun annotate. Okay, so why do we need to use this tool? Um, Fun Annotate is specifically designed to annotate eukaryotic genomes. At, at the beginning, it was written to annotate fungal uh, genomes, but now it works on uh, any species. Um, and we need this tool because um, eukaryotic genes are often um, quite complicated compared, compared to prokaryotic genes because you have introns and you have some uh, signals at the sequence level that are not very specific. So like a intron um, a donor and acceptor si sites, for example, there are very short sequence of two letters, which are found in many places uh, that are not uh, every time an intron uh, donor or acceptor site. So fun annotate is in a big pipeline that will uh, try to align some evidences against uh, the genome sequence and run some ab initio uh, uh, gene predictors to um, to predict gene structures, uh, taking into account all this information. So in our case, we're going to try to annotate uh, Mucor musedo uh, genome, which is a, a fungal species that was uh, assembled following the fly uh, assembly tutorial on GTN too. And we are going to use some RNA-seq data uh, from a, from a, uh, an RNA-seq uh, experiment that was uh, made available on the public data banks. And we are going to use also some protein uh, sequence alignment from protein uh, of public data, data banks. We'll solve all this a bit later. Um, after uh, we have run a uh, fun annotate to predict the gene structure, we try we will try to uh, add some functional annotation to know what is the function of each gene that has been predicted by a fun annotate. So we we'll run eggnog mapper and interposcan, and uh, after that we will try to integrate all this information, the structural annotation and the functional annotation into a single annotation file that can be submitted as is to uh, public data data banks like uh, NCBI. And at the end, we also uh, uh, visualize our annotation using a, a genome browser. So uh, it's time to begin uh, the tutorial. So the first step is to uh, get all the data that you will need during uh, this, uh, this tutorial. So they are all available here. We're going to upload them to your history. So I'm on usegacy.eu. I've created a new story that I will name Fun Annotate, which is not very original. And then I click on Upload Data here, Paste Fetch Data, and I paste all the, the URLs here. I start. Okay, so the data sets are now uploaded. So let's have a look at them. The first one here is the genome sequence as was generated by the fly tool in the, if you look at the fly assembly tutorial. So it's the mucor musedo genome uh, where you only have the sequence and it has been uh, masked using, uh, using a repeat masker with the human uh, data set. If you, you can see how it was masked following the repeat masking tutorial, which is also available on the DTM. Uh, other data sets include RNA-seq data. So it's uh, paired in data, sequencing data for an RNA-seq experiment. So it's looked like this, and it comes from a public data, data set from, uh, from SRA. So you have the, I, R1 uh, reads, forward reads, and the reverse read here. 
So this will be used by Fernandote to 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 see where there is expression along the genome sequence. And Fernandote will also use uh, this uh, protein sequence file, sub Swiss prod subset. These are sequences from the Swiss prod data bank, which is a bank of uh, very good quality uh, protein sequences. Uh, it's a subset, which, which means we have only kept uh, nearly 4,000 sequences from Swiss Prot. Uh, it's a subset because we wanted a smaller data set to make the tutorial a bit shorter to have some uh, quick processing by fun annotate. But for real life data, real life annotation of a genome, you will use the whole Swiss Prot data banks. And the two last uh, data sets are alternate annotations. In fact, it's a result of uh, running fun annotate on the same genome, but with different setting. And we will, so at the, we will see at the end of this, this tutorial um, how to compare the annotation that you will generate and this one to see which one is the best of the two. OK. So now to um, run finality, the first step is to prepare the RNA-seq data uh, to align this data along the genome to produce a BAM file that will be used by finality then. So to align RNA-seq data, we will use a star. So our RNA star here, which is a tool designed specifically to align uh, RNA-seq data along the genome, taking into account uh, intron uh, and exons, uh, as you would expect for this kind of data. So this is paired in data, and we only have uh, one experiment, so we will use uh, individual data sets. The forward reads is R1, and the reverse one is R2. And we will use a reference genome that is in the history. It's uh, genome masked, the file you have just uploaded. And we will set this, uh, this value, the length of the SA pre-indexing pre string to 11. Uh, why do we, do we do this? Uh, because 11 is the recommended value for this uh, genome size. And uh, I, you can guess uh, this value if you run star the first time on your genome and look at the output. And uh, that's what I did. And I saw that star was telling me, hey, you should use 11 for this uh, option. So that's what I do. Um, that's it. We're going to run it this way. And uh, well, if you have multiple uh, RNA-seq data files, you can uh, align them all with RNA star. They will produce each one a specific uh, BAM file as output. And at the end, you can merge them all with a, with a merge SAM files tool here. And there you can select all the BAM files you have generated. When it's finished, you can um, see that you have the BAM files that you are that you will use for fun annotate. It's the half uh, gigabytes of data in binary format that you can't uh, maybe read like this. This file will not be used. It's the splice splice junctions position on the genome. We will not use it. And you have this file, which is a log file of what was aligned by a star. And if you look at the statistics, there is one that is very interesting. It's this uh, percentage, which say that 96% uh, of the reads were uh, uniquely mapped onto the genome uh, in the expected orientation. And, uh, so that's a very, very good uh, score. Um, and it's normal because, in fact, the RNA-seq data here is not the raw data that was downloaded from SRA. Uh, in fact, we've reduced it to a subset of reads uh, that are mapping onto the genome to, to uh, once again, to make the fun annotate and RNA star run faster during the, the tutorial. Anyway, 
So now we have this map file and we will use it to run final edit. So now we will run the structural annotation prediction using fun annotate predict annotation. So it is this tool here and we will see which uh, setting we will uh, adjust. So the first one is which genome we want to annotate. So this one is easy. It's the genome mask sequence, still the same. Then you have this fun annotate database. So this um, in this box, you have to select the you you should select the latest version. So for uh, usegalaxy.eu, it's this one. Uh, you can have other version on other use galaxy servers. And if there is no version, you should contact the use galaxy uh, administrator to uh, to install it from the admin panel. Okay, then um, perfect. Uh, there is this information after that uh, that fun annotate requires to have some information about the genome we we are trying to annotate. So the species is Mucor musedo. Um, the strain name, we don't have an isolate name, but the strain name is Mach 1. And there is this box uh, where you can select if it's a fungus species or not. Here we will keep no. Uh, you could um, choose yes because Mycomicido is a fungal species. But the thing is, um, after testing it, um, you don't get really better results by uh, selecting this option. And um, you might even get some errors uh, during the process. So in this case, we'll use a no. And in most cases, it's fine to use no. We'll consider that there's only the ploidy of the assembly is one. So there are not multiple copies of the same genes because of multiple chromosome copies. The rest will be kept as is. And now the important part is the evidences here. So this is where you need to select the RNA-seq data you have just mapped in the previous step. So uh, Fenalotate will use this data to train ab initio predictors like Augustus and Jean Mark to, uh, to recognize a gene on this specific uh, genome. Then if you have full lens mRNA or EST sequences uh, in FASTA format that you would like to align against the genome, you can provide it here. But in this tutorial, we don't have these sequences. So we just uh, skip it. And here, you can select uh, protein sequences to align against the genome. Uh, in, a, in real life, you would use uh, this default option, use Uniprot KB SwissProt that is already provided by Fenalotate. So it's the full set of SwissProt proteins uh, to align against the genome. Even if there are proteins from very distant uh, organisms, uh, Fenalotate will try to align it. And, and uh, if it's too distant, the, in worst case scenario, this sequence will just not be aligned and it won't pollute the results you will get from Fenalotate. In our case, I said at the beginning that we are going to use a subset of SwissProt to, to make it faster. So this is this FASTA file. Uh, we'll leave the defaults here. And, there, and then there is uh, this option um, to tell uh, Fenalitate how it should use Busco to try to train uh, the, the models, the ab initio predictors to recognize gene on this genome. So uh, here we will select the, the uh, taxon which is closest to our species. And we have some mucorales uh, DB, so it's cool, select it. And we'll select also an initial Augustus species that is quite close to our organism, which is Rhizopis orizae, which is another uh, fungal species. Okay, so then we will not filter the output. We'll keep everything, but you can choose to keep only uh, uh, pro uh, 
gene models that have a specific minimum intron length or maximum intron length or minimum protein length. That's what you can select here. You can finally tune each sub command that is run by phone annotate. So Augustus, GeneMark, and EVM, for example. We will not do it here. Defaults are fine. And here, we want to keep all the outputs of an annotate. So we select all like this. OK. So now we are ready to run the tool, and we do it like this. So you get all this uh, data set produced by Fun Annotate. Let's have a look at each one. Um, the first one is annotation in gene bank format. So it's the list of all the genes that were detected by Fun Annotate on the genome uh, with their position and their uh, an automatic name, which is just Fun 1, 2, 3, etc and the protein sequence that was predicted for this gene. And um, they all have a hypothetical protein name because it's just a structural annotation. There is absolutely no functional annotation at this, at this state. Um, and that's it. Um, then you have uh, the same information in GFF format here, which is another very standard format like this. So you have this exact same information with uh, the position on scaffold one from start to the end, there is a gene with this identifier. And in this gene, there is one mRNA with two exons and two CDS sequences uh, that are part of these exons. And you have this on all the genome. OK, that's cool. You have the NCBI-TBL annotation file, which is quite similar. It's another format describing all the genes that were predicted. And then you have three important files that are the protein sequences. So it's a FASTA file with a sequence of each uh, gene that was predicted, in, so the protein sequence. The same thing for the mRNA sequence. So the full mRNA, including um, any uh, uh, UTR. Three, uh, three prime or five prime, and uh, the, the CDS sequence here, which is only the translated sequence of each uh, each uh, gene that was predicted. So if there are no UTRs, the sequence in CDS is the same as in mRNA here. And then you have a few. Uh, output file, so the tbl to isn error summary here will give you some statistics on potential problems that was that were found by fun annotate uh, in the genes that were predicted. So it tells you that uh, there is one gene that is probably a partial gene where a part of it, it is missing. There are 600 genes that have a very short exon that is maybe problematic or maybe not. It's uh, Fernandez is not sure of that. And uh, there is more than 400 genes that have a very, uh, well, a rare splice consensus donor site, which means it's a atypical sequence for a donor site uh, of an intron. OK, the same thing. Uh, detail for each of these uh, hundreds of genes. You have the every time uh, it tells you that at this position on the genome, uh, the gene that was predicted with this name uh, have a short exon. So you can review this list if you're interested and and check what to do with it. And finally, there is a stats file, which is maybe the most important one, that will give you a lot of information on the result that was uh, generated. So first, uh, it gives you information about the Fenalotate version, which tool exactly was run by uh, Fenalotate with which data, uh, with exact versions. So as you can notice uh, here uh, in the video, I selected 2023 uh, version of the Fenalotate, but here it's 2022. Uh, it's just because um, I made a trick on the data sets here. So in your 
uh, history, it should be 2023 or the version that you selected on the, in the form. So you have a few statistics on the assembly that you analyzed. So the number of contigs, the lens, the N50 and the GC content. So this one should be the same as the what is produced in the fly assembly tutorial. And finally, uh, what we were looking uh, at, uh, well, looking for at the beginning, it's uh, the number of genes that were predicted by Fluenotate. So here it produced uh, 14,000 genes and a bit less mRNAs uh, and a few tRNAs. So Fluenotate is also able to predict tRNAs. So it means this one, uh, mRNA and tRNA, if you uh, add the two numbers, you get the, no the total number of genes. Um, other interesting uh, statistics are the average gene length. So it tells you that on average, the uh, 14,000 genes have a length of uh, 1.5 kilo, kilo basis. And then you have information on the sub um, the structure of uh, each uh, gene. So the, the number of uh, genes that have UTR or, or not, in this case, there is no gene with UTR, which is often the case in this configuration of phenotate. Um, the number of CDS that have no start codon or no stop codon, which can happen sometimes if the scaffold is not complete, for example. Uh, the total number of exons, how many transcripts have multiple exons, how many have only one exon, what is the exon uh, length on average or the protein length. Um, that's it. So if you look at all these numbers, it gives you a rough idea of uh, how your annotation looks like. If you, are, if you add a uh, 10 times more or less genes, you would be quite surprised, but you know that 14,000 genes for this genome is quite reasonable. It's, it's a clue that gives you a rough idea of uh, the quality of the annotation, but it's not enough. We'll see later how to have better um, information about that. Okay, so now we have an, an annotation a structural annotation, and we want to add some functional annotation to it to know which gene was predicted and what is their function. And uh, and that's it. So let's have a look at the functional annotation tool. So we will use two main tools to perform functional annotation. The first one is Eggnog Mapper. So Egnog is a big database of uh, orthology data. So they are the creators of this database um, made a lot of orthology analysis to cluster uh, many similar genes that are thought to have the same function in many, many species. Um, these genes are available on the specific uh, Egnog database. So it's um, available on this website. Like this, so you can see that there are 5,000 organisms that were used, and it produced more than 4 million autology groups. And uh, with this tool in Galaxy, uh, the all the protein sequence that were predicted by Fenanotate will be compared to all the autolog uh, sequences from the Egnog database. And every time there is a match. Uh, the Egnog Mapper tool will get all the functional annotation that is available in the Egnog database for the corresponding ortholog orthology group and get this information and assign it to the genes uh, that were to the gene uh, that was uh, predicted by Fun Annotate. Uh, this is quite uh, useful. So it's very simple to use. You just need to select the correct version of Egnog database. If it's not available, you should contact the use Galaxy administrator to, to install it. Um, then you have to select uh, which uh, sequences you want to analyze. So it's just the result of an, of an annotate, uh, the protein sequences level. 
here um, and in output option all, all the option can stay uh, with their default values but in the output options here um, you can unselect this one because we want to have some uh, documentation like yeah some comments in the output files to understand what we are generating so you run this tool it will generate two data sets and while it runs you can run the other one which is interpol scan here um, so this one is a huge um, huge script in fact interpro is a big database of protein motifs and patterns that were defined by a lot of people in the world of researchers specialists of each gene family and when you use this interpro scan tool uh, it will take each protein sequence predicted by phenol notate and uh, look into it to find any uh, motif that is uh, known into the Interpol database. And when there is a match, it will get the uh, functional annotation uh, that is uh, associated to this motif and assign it to the protein that is matching. Um, that's it. So here, once again, we select the protein sequence that were predicted. We are analyzing protein sequence here. Here, we need to select the latest Interposcan database version. Um, so once again, if it's not available, contact the administrator of the Use Galaxy server. And then we have to select uh, which applications we want to uh, to run. So this one is a bit tricky. I, I mean, you need to understand what you do. Here you have a, a whole a full list of uh, different uh, sub bases of Interpro and specific and corresponding tools. So these ones are free to use. So you, most of the time you, you will select them all. If you are in a hurry, you can unselect uh, Panther and PFAM somewhere here. Uh, but it's not recommended because these two data banks are are, well, they take some time to analyze. That's why you you want you might want to unselect them. But on the other hand, they produce a lot of meaningful and useful results. So most of the time we keep it and uh, wait patiently to have a good result. The other option is this one because there are a few um, sub sub applications of Interposcan that are not free. They require the use the acceptance of specific restricted license which means you you use it but you acknowledge that you will not use it for commercial use which is hard to define but you have to think about it for yourself and uh, there you can select them all or only a few ones it's up to you you just need to be aware that these op these applications uh, are not installed on all use Galaxy servers. So if you are on EU, they should work on, on .fr2, but on other ones, it's probab probable that they will not work. Just keep it in mind. That's it. And even if you don't run, run them, all these ones are uh, already give some quite useful results. So don't be afraid to unselect it. Um, Okay, the only op other option we might want to, to change is this one. By default, you only get a, t a tabular file as output. Here we want also the XML file. And let's wait. Let's run it and wait for the results. It's finished. So now let's have a look at the results. Um, let's begin with eggnog mapper. So you have two results. The first one is seed orthodox files. So yeah, it will display here. Uh, what it gives you is the similarity between each protein that is predicted by Fernandotate with a corresponding protein in the Egnog database uh, that was used by Egnog Mapper. So you can see each identifier, and if you use it, you can search it for in the Egnog database to get more information. 
And you can see how it matched with a uh, knee value and uh, which part of the protein uh, matched and, uh, and so on. So this file might be interesting, but the other one is much more interesting usually. It's the annotation files file. And here um, you see uh, the the match between the query, so the protein that was predicted by Fenanotate, and the same protein that is in the eggnog database with the E value. So matches with a too high E value were uh, uh, filtered out and these ones were kept and the most important part are this column after that so eggnog ogs are a list of uh, ontology group uh, in the eggnog database that were identified for this specific protein so every time you get uh, an identifier in various formats so if you look for it in eggnog mapper here you can have more information here. Uh, we won't go into details, but it's just this identifier. And if you go a bit further to the right, you get a um, lot of different fields. You get cog category, uh, description of this category, and a preferred name, which is a name that was assigned to this protein based on its similarity to an ontology group uh, that is known to have this function. So for example, this uh, name. Um, that's it. You have also sometimes a symbol associated to it. So a gene symbol, which is uh, linked to the description here. And here you have a list of gene ontology terms. So um, if you look on Google for this term, this is, oh wait. <laughs> okay, no, <laughs> this is funny. <laughs> Yes. So gene ontology term is just um, a number corresponding to a um, uh, very uh, standard uh, vocabulary uh, describing a function, for example, or here a cellular component. So by saying that this uh, predicted gene has the gene ontology, gene ontology term one, two, three, it says that it's a uh, uh, part of the histone acetyltransferase complex. So each term like this uh, with a specific number has a spe specific name and description that has been standardized. And you have a full list like this uh, for each gene based on the EGNOG database. So it's very long like this. After that, you have information that you can get from the uh, keg uh, database is a bit the same principle of um, gene ontology but this time it's based on the um, uh, pathways uh, so if you look for this term in the keg data database you can uh, find more information and uh, you have the same thing for another base a uh, database which is bright and casi big reaction pfam and uh, and so on so all those all those uh, columns correspond to specific data databases uh, that you might be interested in or not, depending on uh, what you're working on. So all the, the genes don't have information on all columns, which is absolutely normal. So it's nice. Now our genes have names and functions, and that's pretty cool based on eggnog database. And now the same kind of result has been generated by Interproscan using another method, which is very important because uh, at the end, we, you will want to uh, aggregate all the information that you get from eggnog and Interproscan. We'll see that a bit later. So the output of Interproscan says that, uh, yeah, let's have a look at this one. No, this one. 
uh, for a specific protein predicted. Uh, this colon is just an identifier, unique identifier based on the protein sequence. You are not very much interested in it. Uh, what you're interested in is uh, this one, ProSide Profiles. It's, uh, well, for each protein, you will have a line, uh, and each line corresponds, yeah, you can have multiple lines, and each line corresponds to a match to a specific um, motif with an identifier here from a specific sub data base of Interposcan of Interpo. So it means this protein have as a match with the motif PS uh, 50110 from the ProSide Profiles uh, database. So if you look for ah, sorry, if you look for it in Interpose can Interpro, sorry, I always confuse the between the two. If you look for it, you should have a match here. And you can click on it and get a lot of information. So it's a ProSite profile uh, with a full description of uh, what this domain that was found in a protein uh, uh, to what it corresponds. So this one means that uh, the protein that contains this domain is probably involved in the response to uh, uh, is probably a response regulatory domain. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So then you have some uh, score information and some uh, full text description here. Uh, here too. And IPR number is um, another identifier. Uh, that is available in the, in the Interpro. In fact, each each uh, individual uh, motif like this from specific database is integrated into Interpro into a general uh, IPR uh, ID here. And this one is a more general description of the motif, and it can contain a different motif uh, that. Uh, that correspond to the same uh, to the same function. This one. Okay, and then you have other go terms that are assigned by Interproscan based on the pro site, on the profile matches, and a lot of external identifier like MetaSeq uh, database uh, identifier or Reactome, and, and so on. Okay, that's great. Um, so we have structural annotation, functional one. And as I said, we, we'd like to uh, integrate all these data into a single uh, final annotation uh, that could be ready for submission to NCBI. So let's try to do it. So if you want to submit your annotation to NCBI, there are uh, a number of things that you need to, to consider. So let's have a look at the submission to NCBI uh, section of the tutorial. Uh, first, you don't want to perform a real one with the data from this tutorial because you don't want to pollute the NCBI uh, database. So please uh, just uh, just uh, yeah generate the files, but don't submit them really to NCBI. And then when you need to submit an annotation, you have to, prior to that, to um, to prepare uh, all your raw data and a few other things. First, you need to create a bio project and a bio sample on the NCBI portal. So this uh, will describe which uh, genome you're trying to sequence, assemble, and then uh, uh, annotate and then submit to NCBI. So which species, um, which uh, environment it was uh, it was uh, taken from before sequencing, etc. Um, you have the biosample, which describes very precisely which um, which biological sample was used for sequencing and for assem and assembly of the sequencing data and annotation. You should already have 
uh, submitted your uh, raw reads to uh, well DNA seq and RNA seq data. Uh, this data should be submitted to SRA first and have identifiers associated to them, and they should be linked to the bio project and bio sample. And also, you should consider first submitting the assembly to NCBI before submitting the annotation, because uh, there is a good chance that NCBI will look into your assembly data, your genome sequence, and ask you to modify it if they found some uh, problems in a sequence uh, and uh, so you should do it first before really trying to uh, annotate the genome. Um, the other thing that you need to have before submitting an annotation is a locus tag. So this is the prefix that is used um, in, the, uh, in the predicted gene uh, names, identifier at least. For now we are using fun uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 001, and uh, that is the default prefix, but you should have a specific one which is assigned by NCBI when you want to create your uh, annotation uh, submission uh, to the portal. When you have done all this, you have to prepare um, a specific uh, template file, which is just a, a text, we'll see its structure a bit later, that you can generate by using this form. So let's do it. So let's say we are John Doe. We have a wonderful email address, which is John Doe at example.org. We work for Foo in the bar department, which is located in Foo Bar Street in Paris, in France. Okay. The first author is John Doe. Um, okay, so this field has changed since last time. So here you can write the name of a potential paper you would write on this. which is unpublished yet. And here you would write, if you have it, the bioproject and biosimple identifier that you can get from the NCBI portal. So once you have filled all these um, fields, you can create the template file and download it. It looks like this, so it's not very pretty for the human eye, but Oh, uh, yes, we will upload it to our galaxy history now. So I will drag it from here. Okay. Oh, yeah, you haven't seen the structure. I will show you it now. So the template is BT file looks like this. It's not very really pretty for the human eye, as I said earlier. So now we have this template file. We have the result of Interproscan in Eggnog Mapper and the first uh, predicted annotation by Phenonatate. So we want to integrate all of this into a final annotation ready for submission. So to do this, we have a specific Phenonatate tool here, which is Phenonatate functional annotation here. And here we have to select first the, the finality predict output. So it's a gene bank format. It's the one that was predicted a bit earlier here. Um, here again, we have to select a specific finality database. So choose the latest one and the same one that you used earlier in the predict state. Um, then you have to select the template from the NCBI uh, submission for portal here. You have to select the eggnog output, so the annotations output here. Uh, we don't have anti-smash, which is more of an prokaryotic stuff, so we 
we don't have one for this genome. We have interpose scan output in XML format here. And once again, we have to select which uh, Busco, Busco model we want to use. So the, the one closest to our genome is Mucorales. Um, that's it. We have to use the same strain name as earlier, Muc1. And here you have to specify the locus tag that most of the time will be provided by the NCBI. In our case, it's M Musido uh, underscore. And we select which output we want. So we select all. And that's it. We run the tool and we wait a little. So let's have a look at the different files. There are many ones. Um, the most important are gene bank outputs here. So it's once again all the, the genes that were predicted by uh, Fanatate. But this time you see that the prefix is, is different. Here it's M Musido, as we asked. You have the protein sequence. And for specific genes, um, you have all the annotation, functional annotation from eggnog and interposcan that is associated to the gene in the gene bank format. So uh, you have eggnog data here with different identifiers and interposcan data here. Um, and uh, yeah, you might even have some uh, gene names that were changed uh, for specific genes. So this one is named TAF5. One because Ignog say that it was this name for this uh, gene. That's great. Um, you have this file, which is the same kind of, of information, um, but uh, in another format, which is just a tabular format. Um, these ones uh, split AGP, TBL files, second genomes and scaffold sequences. All these are files that will be asked when you submit your genome to NCBI. So you have it. They are not, they are contain the same kind of information in different formats. So it's not very interesting to look at them uh, one after the other. Uh, you also get the protein sequences here and the mRNA and CDS sequences just at, just as the beginning, but just notice that the uh, Identifiers are, have been changed to M Musedo and the GFF format, uh, which is here. Once again, the gene names have changed and you have some uh, uh, functional annotation integrated. You have a lot of reports uh, describing. Um, here there are, you have a, a few more uh, checks that are done on the, on the annotation with specific warnings telling you to have a look at specific genes that have, might have problem, even if it's not sure. So this is the general report, uh, but you have other things like product must fix, so here you don't have. Need curation, no, new name pass. Uh, here you have a few new names uh, that are not done by Fanatate yet. It's not very important at this stage. But you have here statistics. It's just as the phenotype predict step. But here you have um, these lines that are different. And here you see how many go terms were assigned to genes, how many interposcan matches was were integrated, how many Hegnog matches to, and how many PFAM. Uh, links to and the different databases. So that's quite interesting to look at, that, at these numbers to, to guess if your annotation looks good and if it, uh, it was properly uh, functionally annotated. Um, that's it. Um, so we have now a good annotation ready for submission, but we want to evaluate, evaluate it a bit uh, better and to visualize it. So there is one cool tool to evaluate an, an annotation, which is Busco, which is also used for assembly uh, evaluation. So you will uh, 
have more, more information about it in assembly. But the, the main principle of PUSCO is to look at your annotation and see if it uh, can find a set of genes that are expected to be present in any species of a specific uh, uh, taxon. So for example, uh, if you take uh, Mycorales, you know that all the species of this group are, um, are expected to have a set of genes in one single copy in the genomes. And it's probable, probable that these genes are essential for the life of these organisms. So we use it, I mean, the Busco tool use it uh, to guess if your annotation contains uh, all the genes that it is supposed to be present or not. So it's a good way to, to have a feeling about your annotation to, to check if it's, it looks good or not. So how does it work? You uh, select the protein sequences, the last one that were predicted. Um, and then you say that you want to run in protein mode here. And you select a specific lineage, which is Mycorales once again. Here you have, um, by default, when you run uh, Busco, it will download everything it needs to run and you don't have to worry. But if you use it a lot, you might get errors because uh, it fails to download some data and it, you might have problems like this. In this case, you can use cached lineage data and select the latest one here, if the use Galaxy administrator have installed it. In this case, Busco will not try to download and it will run just a little bit faster and avoid potential uh, download problems. Anyway, in whether you select this option or this one, you will get the same results. Um, I know uh, that on EU it works with this one, so I, I select it. And finally, here I want the short summary text and the summary image, and I can run it. When it's finished, you can look at the beautiful image here, which is a bit too big, ah, like this. Um, so this uh, is a summary of the results. So on a total number of uh, 2,281 genes that um, are specific to mucorales uh, species, uh, Busco tried to find them all on the on the annotation that we have generated. And it found, it found yeah, 2,250 genes in single copy. Uh, and they only found three, oh wait, no. The total number that was searched is this one, 2,449. And uh, yes, and uh, two, 1,281 were found to be complete in the genome, in the annotation we, we provided. And uh, this number were in single copy as expected and 31 were in duplicated in the genome, which is not supposed to happen except if, if there's really a duplication in the genome uh, in the species or if maybe there is an assembly problem with a part of a genome that was uh, what is present in two copies in the assembly instead of one. It can happen too. Then you have the fragmented ones. So there are a few genes that were found but incomplete in the genome or in multiple uh, chunks in multiple scaffolds. So this again can come from an assembly problem. Um, and a few ones to 140 were not found in the annotation, which means either they are not present in the assembly or they were not detected by fun annotate. And probably it's a mix of, of the two. So you have the same numbers in text format, which is maybe more readable if you want to have a look at it. Um, and that's it. So is it good or not here? You can see that the ma vast majority was found in the annotation in single copy and complete, which is a good, um, a good evidence that your annotation is in good shape. Um, 
So on, on its own, it's interesting. But if you have multiple annotations, you can always um, run Busco on each one and see which one is the best. And what is important too is to compare these numbers to uh, the result of running Busco on the raw assembly uh, output. So the, just giving it the sequence of the genome and leg it, letting it uh, find the genes in the sequence uh, prior to annotate the genome. So it's good to have the numbers before and after annotation and to compare it. So I know it's quite similar, which means the annotation is in a good shape in this um, example. Um, for now, we only have seen a text output of annotation. We might want to visualize it. So we have a cool genome browser available in Galaxy, which is JBrowse. Um, so it's just a way to visualize the annotation and the assembly. So we will give it a genome. So the first data set we uploaded, genome masked. Um, and then we have to select a few data sets that we want to display on this genome. So we will uh, display it in two groups. We add two groups. The first one will be annotation. And the other one will be RNA-seq. In annotation, we add one specific track in GFF format, which is the GFF output of the last fun annotated functional run. And that's it. We leave all the other options like as is. And in RNA-seq, we select the uh, output of RNA star. The first two will be run into this uh, tutorial. And no, it's not this data set. It's this option is spam pileups here. And we'll select this to, to display specific uh, visualization. OK, let's run it. So how does it look? So you can open it here. Or what I prefer to do with JBrowse is open it in another tab like this to get the full uh, JBrowse. Wait, oh, it's not doing what I expected. Oh, OK, never mind. It's OK like this. Um, so here you have a genome browser with a list of uh, of scaffolds you can see. So I just realized that it's not displaying the correct one. OK, never mind. I, I tried to be too, too, too smart. So I, I chose a, a wrong uh, JBrowser in my history. I have uploaded a new one here. And that should display properly. On your history, it should display just fine the first time. It's my fault. <laughs> Uh, OK, so this is a standard uh, JBrowse uh, uh, application where you can navigate on the genome. Here you have a specific scaffold, which is displayed. And here you can see the whole scaffold coordinates from uh, 0 to 1 million bases. And you have this region in red that is displayed, that is zoomed in in this section. And here you have a list of tracks that you can display, so we can first have a look at the genes that were predicted by uh, by Fanonotate. So you can see them like this. They have uh, a hypothetical, uh, hypothetical protein name for the one that don't have functional annotation, or if they can have good uh, good names like this. So the big blocks are exons, and the little, uh, the thin ones are introns. And if you look at them. Here you can get all the functional annotation associated to it with the identifiers that you can use and search on the Interpro or Go or Eggnog databases. Fine. And um, you can display also RNA-seq data like this. It can take a little while to load. But what it, when it displays, you can see a coverage um, plot showing you how many reads were aligned to the genomes at specific position. The light gray means it's uh, reads that were aligned at this position. And the, and the dark gray means it's uh, you have reads that were split between two exons 
and these regions are the gaps between these these exams. So you can see the specific reads one by one using this option. So you can see that Fenantate was able to use these evidences, this RNA-seq data aligned to the genome to predict exons of specific genes. And you can go and, and look at other regions on the region. There's a specific JBRAS tutorial if you want to look more into details how it works. Fine. Okay, so now uh, the last thing you might want to do with an annotation is compare it to another one. And remember, you have in your history here an alternate annotation that was performed uh, by myself using Fun Annotate, but with uh, different uh, settings and bad settings, in fact. We'll see how it looks. So the first tool you might want to run is Asian Parseval. So here you have to select um, a reference GFF3 uh, file. It will be the one you have generated. And the prediction GFF file, which is the one that uh, the alternate one that you uploaded at the beginning. And uh, the output type you want is HTML. So you just run this. And the other tool that you want to use is an annotate compare where you will select um, genome annotation in gene bank, gene bank format so the one you have generated and the one uh, the alternate one and here you select once again the latest annotated da database like this and that's it you run it too And you wait a little. Fenantate compare can take quite some time and possible too, I guess. So be patient or, or be patient. <laughs> when it's finished, you can have a look at it. So Asian will give you an HTML file showing you uh, various details on your on the two annotations. Um, here you have a list of scaffolds where you can have more details on each gene and you have some uh, specific uh, numbers after that. So if you go to the scaffold 11, this one, as is explained in the tutorial, you click on the first locus here to get more information. And here you will see a specific region of the scaffold 11 uh, and a comparison of the genes that were uh, predicted by Fun Annotate in the two annotation. So this one is the one um, that was uh, predicted by yourself in the tutorial, and this one is from the alternate annotation. So you can see that um, based on this, Fun Annotate with all the correct settings we use was able to predict four uh, different genes in different orientations. And if you look at the alternate uh, annotation, Fanatate only predicted once big genes with uh, exons in, uh, in the same directions and with a huge entrance. Um, that's it. Um, what it reflects is that this annotation is probably better. And in fact, it's exactly uh, the, the real situation because the, predicted, the um, alternate annotation was used was done using Fun Annotate uh, without giving it any RNA-seq data and choosing a wrong um, lineage for Busco, uh, which was in sector. So he had, it had a lot of trouble predicting genes and predicted like uh, aberrant uh, stuff like this. Uh, so yeah, this agent stuff can help you decide which annotation looks better. And the other tool is Fun Annotate Compare. Let's have a look at the report. So here you have a lot of information, all of your information. First, the stats. You can see how many genes were predicted in in each um, in each annotation. So the first, the the one you have generated as a, uh, yeah, this number is wrong here, but uh, it should be fourteen thousand, and the alternate one as nine thousand. It's wrong because I, I once again I try to be too smart, uh, but on your case, in your case, it should be the correct number. If you look uh, at the orthologs, uh, you can see a list of uh, 
orthologs between uh, genes in the um, in the uh, in your annotation that you predicted and other genes that look similar in the alternate annotation. So you have a full list of orthology groups like this, and you can get more details like this. If you look at, at Interpro, for example, you can see um, how many uh, genes from the first or the second annotation uh, have it, um, have a specific Interpro scan, Interpro uh, numbers associated to them. So what you can mainly see is that the one, the annotation that you generated have more uh, uh, genes with the corresponding uh, Interpro terms than the alternate one, which is once again a, a good uh, clue telling you that your annotation is better. It's the same for PFAM and other stuff like MERAPS and, uh, and so on. If you look at Go here, um, you can see some specific Go terms that are under or other represented in a, in each annotation. So in this case, it's not very representative, but uh, in other cases, it can be uh, useful. Okay, so we now have finished uh, this tutorial. Um, as you can see, it's a complex uh, subject, annotation of genomes. Um, if you want to give us some feedback on this tutorial, you can always, and it's very much appreciated, um, use this feedback form here or contact us on the Slack channel if you are uh, running it during Smorgasbord or other training session. And finally, you might be interested in another tutorial uh, concerning annotation, which is the um, Apollo tutorial here, refining genome annotation. Um, this one allow uh, show you how you can use um, uh, the Apollo application, which looks like this, to manually curate an annotation. So if you uh, have a look at your annotation and for example in GBROS and you realize that Fun Annotate predicted a quite good annotation but there are some genes that are wrong and you want to correct it manually. This Apollo application uh, allows you to do it, it easily. So it might be interesting in following the, the tutorial. Okay, that's it. Thanks for listening.